Welcome to this webinar on predictive and forecasting indicators for effective trading strategies. Before we begin, there are several uh, notifications I uh, must read. Uh, the material provided in this webinar is for informational purposes only. This is about trading, and certainly trading is ri risky and is not for everyone. And for a full disclosure statement, please go to stockspotter.com slash in slash legal dot ASPX. Uh, hi, I'm uh, John Ellers. I'm an electrical engineer. I have retired from the Raytheon company as a senior engineering fellow. I got my uh, bachelor's and master's in engineering from the University of Missouri at Columbia. And I did my doctoral work at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. There I majored in fields and waves and uh, minored in information theory. And that kind of background prepared me to for technical trading uh, when I started trading futures in the 1970s. I uh, developed um, a, I wanted to find something to measure scientifically about data in the market and I settled on cycles. And so I developed a MESA m cycles measuring technique uh, and MESA is uh, an acronym that stands for Maximum Entropy Spectrum Analysis. S and uh, I have uh, been using that for over three decades now. And along the way, I've written four books on trading. Uh, if you'd like to know more about uh, MESA, it's in some of those books. And um, what we're looking at today in this webinar is kind of a sneak preview of my fifth and final book uh, that John Wiley will be publishing uh, later this fall. Most recently, I'm uh, the co-founder of a website, stockspotter.com. So with that introduction, let's get into the good stuff. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is the theoretical basis of the market data structure. And we need to understand the market data um, and how it's shaped and what, what it is comprised of in order to better uh, manipulate it to our benefit. And in particular, uh, we're going to talk about indicators uh, that affect two big segments of that data. <clears throat> First of all, we want to eliminate quantization and aliasing noise as much as possible. And secondly, uh, there is a thing called spectral dilation. The spectrum of market data is not flat, and I'll, I'm sure you'll, you'll understand it when we get there. And we'll talk about not only <clears throat> how it is, but what to do about it. And once we develop the correct indicators, I'll show you uh, that uh, it's a good thing to anticipate uh, swing turning points because you can make excellent entries that way. We'll should get into practical applications of the theory and show you some trading tools and conclude uh, with how best to evaluating, uh, evaluate uh, trading system performance. The market is fractal, Every, just like the weather Everybody knows this. They talk about it, and but nobody really does much about it. Uh, uh, the uh, fractal people will tell you one one size of the market looks like another. That is, if you take a a, uh, a chart of daily data and t take the the scales off it, and you compare it to a chart of weekly data they basically look nearly the same. And that's the fractal uh, expansion. Uh, the people that uh, deal in Fibonacci numbers talk about the log spiral and how the market grows uh, along the spiral. In other words, the market, uh, the cycle amplitude grows in proportion uh, to the length of the cycle period. And that basically is spectral dilation. And that's what we see here on this chart. The scale of the chart, the horizontal scale, is uh, 10 to the minus 1 is in frequency, as we see here. That means 1 over 10, or so that's a 10-bar cycle here. Oh, 10 to the minus 2 is a 100-bar cycle. 10 to the minus 3 is a 1,000-bar cycle. So we have a logarithmic uh, frequency, scale, frequency scale along the horizontal. 
and the amplitude scale is also logarithmic uh, in power. So what we see is um, the thing that everybody knows that the market uh, cycles get larger and larger as the periodicity gets longer and longer and they grow in exactly the same proportion. And that proportion is roughly 6 dB per octave. That is every time you double the cycle period, you're going to double the wave amplitude. Uh, the other thing that I've highlighted here in the chart is uh, the area where we have quantization and aliasing noise. This is, is the natural effect of using sample data. Notice how large uh, the, this noise is at the highest possible frequency, which is a two bar cycle. That's called a Nyquist uh, frequency. And uh, we need to uh, remove that from our uh, filtered waveform so we can look at the good data that's out here. And, and so the thing that surprised me was that spectral dilation persists all the way down to below a 10 bar cycle and there it intercepts uh, the quantization noise. So what that means is we need to um, stay away from cycles that are much shorter than a 10 bar cycle because they're overwhelming. This, the, the quantization and aliasing noise is overwhelming the, the, um, the real data that is an extension along the spectral dilation line. So not only that, but we have to filter out uh, the, the uh, quantization and uh, aliasing noise. So what we also have to do, since this is growing with cycle period, this, the dilation means that we have to compensate for that growth. Otherwise, the longer cycles are going to overwhelm the the swing of our shorter cycles and we have to take that into account in our indicators so let's look at uh, smoothing first most traders use some kind of a moving average for um, uh, filtering and smoothing they they use an exponential moving average as i've shown here or perhaps a simple moving average uh, they all behave in a similar way. That is, they are not very efficient filters. So what I have shown here is a linear frequency scale. And the zero frequency is the lowest frequency that we can possibly have. 0.5 uh, is the highest frequency we have. That is a two-bar cycle period. Uh, one over the frequency is the cycle period. So when we get to 0.1 frequency, that's a 10-bar cycle. I've set the critical frequency um, of the EMA, that is the minus 3 dB point, at 10 bars. And when we do that, we see that a 10 bar EMA only has 13 dB of rejection at the Nyquist uh, frequency. That's not much filtering at all. What I have done instead is I have translated um, and a filter, an analog filter from my radio uh, uh, engineering days and translated that into a digital filter um, that we can use for trading. I'll call this a super smoother. It uh, also has been set to have a critical frequency, minus 3 dB at uh, a 10 bar cycle. But look at the re extra rejection uh, that you get all along here and at the Nyquist frequency the rejection is um, theoretically uh, infinite. This it not only has all of this extra um, rejection of the quantization and aliasing noise but it also has a minimum amount of lag. It only has uh, a, like a two bar lag across, in, in the worst case. And so bottom line is I always use a super smoother for smoothing instead of a moving average. Even though moving averages are easy to calculate, they don't smooth much and it's just as easy to calculate a super smoother and put it in. And here's why it's easier. Here's the code. The variables A1 and B1 
are calculated in terms of the 10 bar uh, critical frequency, or critical period rather, and A1 and B1 are used to calculate uh, the filter coefficients C1, C2, and C3. So here's the expression. Um, so we basically, uh, you, to compute uh, the super smoother, we use uh, a two bar uh, simple average of the closes and use previous values of uh, the computed filter to get the results. The notation in easy language is that the square brackets two means the value of filt two bars ago. This is the value of filt one bar ago. So if you're translating to another um, language, note that this is the uh, notation of one bar ago. Also note that uh, easy language uses degrees in the argument of their trigonometric functions. So you would substitute pi for 180. And here is the the critical frequency, you can change that if you want to. So um, take this and use it, um, and I think you will improve your, your um, uh, filtering a great deal using a super smoother. Now let's look at the spectral dilation part. Uh, usually um, indicators uh, are detrenders, or indicators that are oscillators like a stochastic or an RSI, MACD, and the like. And they are, I, I'll pull a term on you, uh, they are the same as a one-bar filter. That is, they have one difference. For example, a stochastic uh, in its numerator takes a difference between the close, current close and the lowest close over the observation period. So that's a one, one difference calculation. That means it behaves at a, as a uh, one pole filter, which means it rolls off at the rate of six dB per octave. But here's the rub. Remember, spectral dilation is increasing at the rate of six dB per octave. So if our filter is attenuating or decreasing by six dB per octave, we're not decreasing the long waves in our in our high pass filter all we've done is flatten the spectrum out and the result of that is uh, when we take a detrender uh, as if it were a one bar fil one pole filter notice that here the average or the mean value is above the zero line indicated by the blue line so we have an offset which is really the low frequency waveforms of this of this continued trend that's in the prices are leaking through the filter and causing the offset from zero. And it and the big effect here is that we don't have a zero mean. So the way around this is if we need to add another pole onto our high pass filter. So instead of decreasing uh, the amplitude by six dB per octave we're going to decrease at the rate of 12 dB per octave. Then, so we're actually going to get rid of those longer waves that are in the market data. And when we do that, we get this result. The dotted red line is, uh, is the red line I showed you on the previous chart that has uh, the offset. It's a non-zero mean. But the second pole added takes out uh, that long wave and produces this blue waveform that has two effects. First of all, it is has a zero mean on the average. You can see it's m kind of symmetrical about the zero line. And much of the lag, look at the lag that's been removed. Here, the lag is removed. The zero crossing has been moved way to the left. And, and the turning points have been uh, moved to the left which means we're taking out lag. That's two good things that we do with the second filter. So what I do um, in all of my work now is I make a roofing filter. It's comprised of a two-pole high-pass filter to get rid of the spectral dilation effects and a super smoother filter to get rid of quantization and 
aliasing noise. So between the two, I get rid of the high frequency components that are undesired. I get rid of the very low frequency components. In other words, I have a roof over the band of frequencies with which I'm interested. So I can put any other analysis underneath that roof, or if you prefer, behind the roof and calculate it. So let's see what happens when we do that. Oh, let's, here's the code. Uh, uh, first of all, um, this is the two-pole two high pass. I only calculate one variable. It's alpha 1. It's calculated uh, to reject frequent, um, periods longer than 48 bars. And uh, you notice that it's using angular measurements, 360. You should need to have uh, that translated to 2 pi if you're going to another language. So this is the expression for the high high pass filter. Um, it's a two pole high pass filter. I take the output of that filter, put it through the super smoother right here. It's, it becomes an input into the super smoother. So the combination of the two filters constitute uh, the roofing filter. So um, the square brackets uh, means uh, the value of fil two bars ago in this case, or in this case, one bar ago. So if you're translating to other languages, take that notation into account. So there you have it. Here's a, here you can uh, uh, apply the roofing filter. I have not bothered to show declaration of variables. And if you are into programming languages, you understand that you have to declare your variables. That's mainly just to save space on the, on the slide. So um, let's see, uh, uh, let's put that together with something else. Here's the data that we've seen before. And here is a conventional uh, uh, stochastic computed just like uh, everyone else does, except that I use a super smoother to smooth it. Uh, so it's, it's just uh, the current close minus the lowest close over the observation period. Um, divided by the highest close um, um, minus the uh, lowest close over the observation period. This is a normalization. So the re resulting waveform swings between 0 and 1. And conventional um, uh, readings on how a, uh, a stochastic works uh, involve crossovers of percent K and percent D. And if you're in an uptrend, um, there's such readings as you wait until the third time you cross below um, the 80% mark before you go short. And frankly, all of those rules are just plain silly because uh, the stochastic has these long waves in it. It's a, basically the same thing as a single pole filter. And so you have this uh, distortion built into the indicator itself and the interpretation has, has doesn't even take the distortion into account. Now on the bottom subgraph what I've done is I've taken that exact same stochastic calculation except I've preceded it with a roofing filter and now you see we have symmetric swings and that peak there lines up with the peak in the price. The valley here lines up with the valley in the price. The peak here lines up with the peak on the price. The valley lines up with the valley. The peak here lines up with the peak in the prices. The valley in the prices lines up with this valley in the indicator. Uh, there is a big run up here. The uh, turnaround point is a little early but it picks up the valley and that goes picks up this valley. And again this peak picked up by the peak of the indicator. And so you see, we can see the turning points in the prices with great confidence by having a symmetrical um, indicator that's created by smoothing, eliminating the quantization noise, and by eliminating the effects of spectral dilation. So let's put that see what happens when we put that into practice. Uh, I'm going to take that, that bottom uh, stochastic uh, and put it in a trading strategy. Now this is not a trading system by any stretch. 
conventional wisdom says you're to be confident of your of your indicator you're going to wait until the indicator reaches its minimum and crosses up over the 20 percent point before you make your long entry in other words you're waiting for confirmation and then you'll make a, a long uh, you'll keep the long position until the indicator goes to its maximum and then after it reaches maximum crosses back down again across the 80 percent line well what happens here is that the alpha that is the trend of of the trading this is over 10 years of uh, trading s p daily futures you see you have a consistent loss over the 10-year period consistently lose why is that well let's 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 do a little analysis you got a two bar lag uh, in uh, calculating uh, the roofing filter you have another several bar lag in calculating the uh, the stochastic itself and then you get a, an additional lag because you get a signal and you only get to make the entry on the next bar after that that signal you have to be you have to wait until the bar is over in order to get the signal but most of all you have like a two to three bar lag after the turning point waiting for the indicator to cross up well if you add all of those up you've got like an eight bar lag from the real turning point in the price so if you have a monthly cycle it's 10 bars up and 10 bars down so you're eight bars into a 10 bar lag and by the time you get out you're eight bars into a 10 bar move the other way and so you've almost got a guaranteed loser so it's the lag uh, imposed by the calculations and waiting for the indicator to confirm that just 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 is doesn't do you any favors at all but if we have confidence in our turning points here's what can we can do we can take these indicators and just change our rule a little bit and make it work in our favor now the rule i'm going to use with that that stochastic that you saw in two slides ago when it crosses down below the 20 percent point before it reaches a minimum, I'm going to buy long. That means I'm anticipating that turning point. I'm predicting that it's going to have a turning point, and I'm anticipating I'm going to get my long signal before the turning point happens. Well, what does that do? That eliminates, that takes, I'm um, three bars on the good side of of the price turning point in other words i'm in advance and so i've overcome the computational lag of the indicators themselves and i'm getting in with almost precision timing if i'm predicting that turning point and so i predict uh, a law a buy when i cross below 20 percent going down and then i wait until I reach crossing over the 80% point to either get out of the long position or go form a new short position. And so when we do that, no, no, again, it's not a trading system. I only use that simple rule. You probably need other rules involved in a trading system. But notice that the alpha of the trend trading uh, the S&P over the last uh, 10 years the alpha general trend is positive it's not a trading system you couldn't have really traded this of course but I'm trying to in indicate the point that if you anticipate the turning point you're making a profit if you're waiting for confirmation it's gonna bite you and it's gonna bite you bad so by anticipating the turning points you've turned the whole thing uh, in your favor and we take advantage of that concept in stockspotter.com. Here I'm showing you a screen capture of the Swing Trade Setup Analyzer. It's comprised of two indicators, a Mesa cycle. Notice how smooth it is. Number one, it's got smoothing filter. And number two, notice that it's uh, symmetric uh, about the center line. So it's 
eliminating the effects of spectral dilation. The cycle valleys are notated with a green bar and the cycle peaks with a red bar. So here you correlate them with the prices. We have a valley and a peak and a valley and a peak and a valley right a little late on that one, a little late on that peak, a little just a touch late on that valley. Here's the peak, here's the valley and another peak and finally uh, it's picking up um, a peak at the end. So that is a fast indicator tracking as fast as possible but still keeping a smooth indicator of uh, the, the price turning points. The second indicator and the second subgraph here is called Mesa Momentum. Now it's still smoother and the penalty we pay for that uh, smoothness is more lag. And just like we were anticipating uh, the turning points in the stochastic, a swing setup is two things. First of all, you have to be at or have had a cycle minimum within the last few bars. And the Mesa momentum has to be declining. And you're anticipating that turning point when these two conditions are met. So the... Uh, Mesa momentum is declining or at a minimum and you have a minimum. Look at that trade right there. Bang. Here is another one. It's declining or at a minimum. So that would have been a buy signal. Uh, this is not a buy signal because Mesa uh, momentum was not at a minimum. It was above zero. So that would not have been a trade at all. And it turned out that was a good thing. Here, uh, in this case, Mesa momentum is declining at the time that we have a Mesa cycle uh, valley. And so that was a swing setup. And likewise, we have a swing setup uh, right here because the Mesa momentum is declining at the same time we have a uh, make Mesa cycle at a valley. Now, this is not a cherry picked example because you can go to Stock Spotter. Dot com and look at any stock we look at we analyze nearly 5,000 stocks and ETFs and you can analyze the stock for free and in fact uh, here is the selection we have the menu bar at the top you can analyze any stock for free you just saw the swing setup analyzer we have some other analysis tools here uh, near-term forecaster uh, we don't trade the trend, but we have a tool here that you can look at trends because we're, we're again telling you uh, the effects of spectral dilation. We even uh, predict uh, the cycle peaks and the cycle troughs. In addition uh, to um, doing analysis, uh, we have screeners. For example, these are free also. You can uh, get a table of all the stocks that are cycling and in an uptrend, or they may be cycling in a downtrend, or they may be in a sideways market. Uh, there are premium screeners, uh, that is high volume stocks that are cycling, high volatility stocks that are cycling, uh, or high momentum stocks that are cycling and some other ETFs and uh, our own Super 60 stocks that we think are good performers. Um, premium members also get the get a uh, alerts and watch list. We have four different watch lists that you can insert uh, your own stock symbols into and you get alerts uh, when a uh, swing setup is indicated uh, for that stock or you can import your own watch list if you have other filtered uh, lists like uh, the IBD Nifty 50 you can import that those uh, stocks into uh, one of the four available watch list and wait for trading signal trading timing signals uh, on the IBD 50 Nifty 50 for example so what we sell um, as a product uh, uh, we have lots of free tools for you to use, but um, actually I'd prefer that you, you uh, subscribe because uh, we give you explicit uh, trading signals. Um, um, these signals are given at the end of every day and therefore exercise at the market 
on the open of the next trading day. And the reason they're at the market is instead of being uh, limit orders or stop orders, is that we know we have a logged price that everybody agrees on, the opening price, and uh, we're guaranteed of a fill uh, if we trade at the market. So these are valuable for historic tracking. So what we do um, is we give you the entry signals for every hypothetical trade, and we also give you the exit signals. So you have a full trade uh, that, uh, and you can track uh, those by entry date or, um, or any date in history. And then once we have these uh, trading signals for hypothetical trades, we uh, tr track these trades uh, transparently. We give you the performance results. We give you the metrics like the profit factor and percent uh, profitable and, and so on. We give you the trade by trade details if all the way back if you, on, on all the trades that we make. But the best way to analyze performance, in my opinion, is the Monte Carlo results. And I'd like to describe that to you. Uh, this is the results of um, Monte Carlo. And first of all, let me just tell you how we do it. We, we're looking at uh, almost 5,000 stocks over uh, the last two and a half years. And so that's uh, tens of thousands of trades and what we do is we l divide uh, for every one of those trades we get the average profit per day of the trade and we take all of those profits per day and throw them into a proverbial hat and we're doing this electronically of course and so here's what we do uh, to get a randomized uh, result we take and pull out that profit per day one one day at a time and we do that 260 times so we have a year's worth of randomized trading and that gives us the profit for one year then we throw those slips uh, actually every time we pull a slip out we put it back in the hat again and we repeat the process we draw out another 260 trades to get another annualized trade and we repeat that over and over and over to reach 5,000 times. So now you're looking at the number of occurrences and we get uh, uh, close to uh, 55,000 occurrences at, at the middle. Uh, what we're doing basically is randomizing what amounts to 5,000 years of trading experience based upon our actual trades over the last two and a half years. And this no trades are excluded. These are all trades. So some of the, and, and the advantage of doing this is we have really solid statistics on what the performance is. And you're, so in this case, uh, the expectation, that is the center of the uh, normal probability distribution is $4,270. If you always had ten thousand uh, dollars traded, that is, if you were just trading one stock, just as soon as you closed out one trade, you opened another trade, and so you were continuously invested with your ten thousand dollars. Your expectation for profit would be forty-two seventy, or forty-two point seven percent annualized uh, using uh, the stock spotter signals, but the statistics get better than that. We show you that uh, you can lose money. And in fact, uh, uh, with the statistics, uh, you have an 87% chance. In my book, that's pretty good. That's approaching two sigma. 87% um, uh, chance of doing break even or better. And there is some possibility you can make even more money that you can get about 36%, uh, about 86% probability uh, on this side of the curve of making almost $8,000 at the upper one sigma point. And the upper two sigma point, that's about 
a 2% probability of making over $11,000. So the point is that you have a, um, a methodology to statistically evaluate performance over a truly uh, signif statistically significant number of events. And uh, this is much better than a single point calculation like risk of ruin or something like that. This gives you some insight into your expectation of what you can expect to profit if you stick with the system. It is a statistical number. And yes, you can lose two, three, four times in a row. Um, however, two or three or four trades does not make a trading year. Uh, on you'll find that we trade about every two weeks on the average and so you're going to get 25 26 trades a year uh, using our uh, um, on it, uh, on the average uh, length of trade so that is what um, by the way uh, the sharp ratio on our experience is 1.2 um, uh, the sharp ratio um, is a measure of deviation versus uh, um, um, actual earnings. Uh, that is how how much deviation do you have along the way? And any uh, it's usually considered in a portfolio that a sharp ratio greater than 1.0 is a really really good uh, good portfolio. So we also have a lot of resources. For example, um, here I've shown uh, technical papers I've written, uh, webinars and technical presentations I've made. Uh, you can view those. Uh, our help topics and help demonstration videos about Stockspotter are also here. And uh, so you're invited to uh, view all of those. Everything is free on Stockspotter.com except the trading signals. Uh, uh, and uh, the reporting of, of uh, current trades. So uh, please go there, analyze your stocks, um, and see if you'd like to improve your trading. So with all of that, uh, I've shown you a practical implementation of some of the concepts uh, um, that I'm using. And in conclusion, uh, I'd like to have these things stuck in your mind. Uh, number one, um, uh, the real reason for uh, smoothing is, is to get rid of quantization and aliasing noise. That means that we can uh, pin our critical frequency of our smoother at about 10 bars. And uh, uh, anything, if we do it, more smoothing than that, we're introducing lag unnecessarily because we can use a super smoother to effectively get rid of that. We don't have to re rely on longer filters to get rid of the, uh, of the quantization and aliasing noise. Uh, the second thing I'd like to leave you with is the roofing filter it has a two-pole high-pass filter that mitigates the effects of spectral dilation. You saw that. It removes the distortion in, in the time domain, the, this offset from the average, and gives you a zero mean indicator. Uh, you can you in order to do effective swing trading, you need to anticipate uh, the turning point in price, and you can do that with confidence uh, when you use uh, the super smoother and roofing filter. Also, I've shown you that Stockspotter has a full complement of these free analysis tools. You don't have to worry about the filtering or the super smoother. Uh, we have those tools already built in for you for free. And you can scan, uh, uh, screen the entire uh, 5,000 stocks and ETFs uh, for conditions that are conducive to short-term trading. And what we do sell at StockSpotter.com um, provides trading signals in advance and we transparently track the results. We're quite proud of the fact that we call them in advance and we, you can see every trade that we've made in the last two and a half years. So with that, um, I hope that this has enhanced your uh, 
knowledge uh, and expectation of uh, technical analysis. And I wish you good trading and Godspeed.